Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden to Table. Well, it's the holiday season, and we've got a festive afternoon planned here at the farm. And hey, I've got some delicious ideas I want to share with you. In our show today, I'll show you how to create a savory ricotta tart and a delicious Long Island duck with mandarin sauce. Plus, I have a simple and tasty recipe for quinoa, which really accompanies duck well. I'll also show you how to take a very old and traditional recipe and make it a little more appealing. You know, I have so much to share with you today, so why don't we get started with one of my favorite salads for the holidays. This is really delicious, and it's simple to pull together. It's spinach, pear, and cranberry salad. What I'd like to do is show you how to assemble the dressing. What you want to start with is a half a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two teaspoons of coarsely ground French mustard, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of sugar. There we go, just white granulated sugar. You're gonna get all that in a bowl like this and then just take a whisk and you wanna thoroughly combine all of those ingredients. The mustard really gives this dressing a kick. And now before I pour it in the bottle, I just wanna add some fresh black pepper like that. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna put it in this container for serving. And I would recommend doing a double, if not triple, or quadruple recipe because this dressing is so good you're gonna to wanna to use it time and again through the holidays. I wanna show you a couple of things that you can do ahead of time to assemble the salad. I don't know about you, but I love cranberries. They're little flavor explosions in the mouth. And these dried cranberries just need to be softened a little bit by adding just a teaspoon or two of the dressing on them. You know, it can sit for an hour or so. Maybe I'll just add just a little bit more. That'll get those ready to be plated up. And then for the onion, what I'm using, by the way, I used a third of a cup of dried cranberries. And then what I've done is I've thinly sliced a small red onion. That's about a cup of red onion. And to keep these onion rings crisp, what I wanna do is put them in cold water. So I'm just gonna cover these in water Set them in the refrigerator for about an hour or longer if you want. You can actually do this a day ahead of time. This takes away the bite from the onion, but also keeps them very crisp and ready for plating up. You see, when you're ready to serve the salad, just grab a large bowl, toss in eight cups of fresh spinach, your sliced onions, and two thinly sliced pears. Give the remaining dressing in the jar one last shake and pour it over the salad. and then scatter the cranberries and toss it really well so that the dressing fully coats the spinach, and then serve it immediately. And as a finishing touch, just take some sliced almonds. You can toast them or you can just use them raw like this, and they're really good. See, I told you it was easy. Now with the salad finished up, you know what to do with that. Let's get started with the main course. It's time to take a look at the duck. We're doing something a little different for this holiday season. Rather than turkey or ham, I'm actually cooking a couple of ducks. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking out a few pin feathers that they missed during the processing of these birds. There we go, just take those out like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crisscross the legs by just cutting a little bit of the skin here on the end. Then I just take the leg and tuck it through and cross it like that. And then you just take the other leg and tuck it under this one like that. I'll do the same here. Now, ducks are fatty, uh, but a lot of this fat is gonna cook off, and there's a lot of nice, delicious, lean meat underneath that skin. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350. These birds are gonna cook for two hours, but at the hour and a half point, we're gonna add this wonderful mandarin sauce to these that really gives them a great flavor. Now what I'm gonna do is just take some salt and pepper and apply it all over the birds this. Using some sea salt here and then cracked black pepper. This is really all you have to do with these birds. The flavor in the sauce 
will come at the end of the cooking. Um, and once I get these birds in the oven, then we'll start working on that sauce. It's really good and doesn't take a lot of steps to prepare this. Okay. So I think we're in pretty good shape here. There's no need to apply any oil to these birds. Ready to go. One of them there. And his leg back. And the other one here. Now, I cut the tips of the wings off because there's really um, no nutritional value in those. There's very little meat, but this part is very good. These birds, by the way, are Pekins. These are Long Island ducks. And um, Pekins are a Chinese breed that were introduced in the 1870s. Uh, the breed that we raise here at the farm is one called an Aylesbury, an English duck that's older. It's a heritage bird. It goes back to the 18th century. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just make a foil tent and place over the top of these ducks. I'm just going to wed these two pieces of foil like this and then take the tent and just loosely apply it over the top of the birds like this. Yep, there we go. Keep some moisture in there. And now it's time to pop them in the oven and they're ready to go. Now let's get to that mandarin sauce. This is a recipe that belongs to a friend of mine who makes this regularly and it's so delicious. In a blender or food processor, I start with two small cans of mandarins, one drained of its juice and the other with the juice. And you want to blend this until the texture is smooth. Then in a small bowl, mix four tablespoons of cornstarch and just a little chicken stock until the cornstarch is fully dissolved. Next, go ahead and pour the remaining six cups of chicken stock, the cornstarch mixture, and one cup of orange juice and four tablespoons of lemon juice into a deep pot. Give that a good stir and add the rest of the ingredients, which will include two tablespoons each of honey, soy sauce, sugar, along with four teaspoons of grated ginger, then the mandarin puree. Stir the mixture over medium heat until the sauce boils and starts to thicken. All right, and look at those ducks. Aren't they beautiful? Now I've taken these out, like I said, about 30 minutes, even 40 minutes before they're completely finished. You can see there's still some fat that's come off of the ducks, which is fine. Most of it, a lot of fat has already come off of them. What I did is transferred them from that roasting pan into a baking dish. And now it's time to just apply this mandarin sauce. What you want to do while the ducks are hot is just apply this mandarin sauce all over them. Down in the cavity of the bird, all on the sides, just like this. Look at that, beautiful. All right, here we go. So now they're ready to go back into the oven. I'm not gonna tint them because I want the skin to be crispy. And they'll go back in here for another, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Now these birds will be ready to come out of the oven just about the time my guests arrive. A few months back, I went to the National Poultry Show and found these beautiful ducks, and I couldn't leave without taking a few of them home. Yeah, they look like they're doing great this morning. They're all settling in. They came all the way from Indiana last night. They got here about midnight, which, you know, my brother didn't really like that, but uh, he received them and got them in this pen. They're looking really happy. What's great about these two breeds, and there's two represented here, the smaller one is called an Aylesbury. It's from England, and it's actually on the a critical list as far as the ALBC goes, the American Livestock Breeds Conservancy. So what we're trying to do is preserve the genetic heritage of these Aylesberries. The big guy in there is a Pekin Drake. And both of these breeds are excellent for the backyard garden. The ducks are perfect for eating bugs and other things in the garden and providing good waste for composting. And they're a lot of fun to watch. So why don't I jump in here and let's grab one so you can see it up close. Come here, guys. Come here, big boy. Oh yeah. So this is a big drake, which means it's a boy. 
And um, I'm really proud of these because I worked with a guy in Canada who's actually brought some new blood into, uh, into Canada from England. And this is where these ducks originally came from. So it's important for us to have various strains of these ducks to keep the genetic material vibrant. Uh, so these, the next generation of Aylesberries will be really healthy and vigorous. Now you can see they have a beautiful sort of apricot, soft pink bill and bright yellow legs. And he's a big boy. You see, the Aylesberries were raised mainly as a meat or market duck. As the Pekin, the big boy in the pen with a dark orange bill, they're also raised as commercial ducks. That particular duck is from China. What's interesting about these birds is they were first exhibited in America at the first poultry show in Boston in 1849. So they've been around for a long time, but their numbers have dropped and you rarely see them in shows today. So it was really great to be able to hook up with some folks at the poultry show and pick up a few new bloodlines for our operations here at the farm. If you decide you want to keep some ducks, whether it's Aylesberries or a Pekin, you want to keep two or three. They're, they're a flock bird, so they need a little companionship. Uh, you want to make sure that you can lock them up at night so that predators don't get to them. It can be neighborhood dogs, raccoons, foxes, that sort of thing. And you want to make sure that uh, you've got plenty of space for them. They can be locked up in a pen like this at night where they're protected, but you can turn them loose in the garden throughout the day. And what I like to do is have a drake and two or three hens uh, the hens will lay a lot of eggs and you can eat those eggs and they'll actually sit on them and hatch little ducklings. So I'm going to put this guy back in here. Okay, join the crowd. What I love about the Ellsbury and the Pekin is that they're both really big, heavy ducks. They have a low keel and that makes them look like almost like nursery rhyme ducks that you would see in Mother Goose stories. We give them plenty of feed. They're big eaters. Uh, it's a blend of food specifically for waterfowl. You want to make sure they have plenty of water, plenty of water to drink. They don't necessarily have to have water to swim around in, although they do love it and they have a lot of fun and it's fun to watch them. Now we've all heard of plum pudding, a traditional English holiday dessert. But what I have here is a recipe that is really quite simple to make and it's sort of a modern twist on the old plum pudding. A great old-fashioned tradition for the holidays is eggnog. Now, I don't know about you, but I love eggnog. When I was a kid, I craved it. It was one of my favorite things about the holidays. Well, what I have is a recipe that takes a much more sort of modern spin. For instance, if you have friends who um, can't do dairy, then this is the perfect solution, and it really is good. Now, we're gonna start with some soy milk. In fact, four cups of soy milk. This recipe will make enough eggnog for six to eight people, depending on how much they love eggnog. And then what I'm going to take is some extra firm tofu. And what you need here is seven ounces of extra firm tofu. I'm just gonna drop that in like this. A bit of splatter going on there, it's not a problem. And this is gonna make it really creamy. It's really good with the extra firm tofu. And then what you wanna to do to begin to flavor it is to use seven tablespoons of maple syrup. And we're just getting started with the flavoring here. 
right. Now the rest of the ingredients are gonna really kick up the flavor quotient of this recipe, and they're all in teaspoon increments. For instance, we're gonna take some vanilla extract, and I have two teaspoons of vanilla extract going in there. Next comes cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. And I'll finish it off with two thirds of a cup of amaretto. Now what you wanna do is blend this until it's smooth and frothy. That looks about right. Now you can make this up ahead of time. It's really good. And you can see just how creamy this is. Let me just pour some out so you can see it. Look at that, very smooth. And tasty, really good. Ready. Look at that, so beautiful. Look, at, isn't that great? This is a savory ricotta cheese and thyme tart. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to make. People just love them. And it's so light, you could almost have this as the entree, but it's a nice compliment to some of the things that we're having. What's marvelous about it is the use of the fresh thyme. Of course, thyme is so easy to grow. You see, it's the perfect herb for containers, either alone or in combination with some other plants that won't shade it out. You can simply harvest the leaves as you need them, including through the winter in places where the plant is evergreen. Although the flavor is most concentrated just before the plant blooms, thyme is so aromatic that the leaves have good flavor all the time. Now to make these tarts, you wanna start by preheating the oven to 350 degrees. Then in a large bowl, add four cups of ricotta cheese, half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and two fresh eggs in a bowl and mix all this together until it's smooth. Then spread the ricotta mixture over the pastry sheets that have been placed in tart pans. and sprinkle two leeks that have been sliced thinly over the top of the ricotta. Then brush some melted butter over the leeks. Next, you just sprinkle four teaspoons of fresh thyme leaves over the leeks with a little sea salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Then just slide them into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. It's really that simple and made even simpler when you're using a pre-bought puff pastry, which makes it really light and fluffy. You bring them out of the oven, just make sure you set them on a cooling rack till they cool down. They really are delicious. Give this recipe a try. Mm. Those ducks look so good. Now the perfect complement to the duck is a light seed, not a grain, called quinoa. And I've got some here, it's coming right along. Just take a look at this. This seed comes from South America and it has great flavor. And I like it because it's light. So often holiday meals are really heavy. This is a very simple recipe using some fresh herbs, and all you have to do is melt one tablespoon of butter in a saucepan over medium heat, then add one cup of cooked quinoa and toast it until it's lightly brown. Next, stir in two cups of vegetable broth and bring this to a boil. Now reduce the heat to a simmer and cover the quinoa 
and let it cook for 15 minutes or until it's tender. When the quinoa is ready, turn off the heat and add two teaspoons of minced garlic and one small onion that's been chopped and sauteed. Give all that a good stir and add two tablespoons of Italian parsley that's chopped, half a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves, and about a half a teaspoon of salt and a dash of lemon juice. Just make sure all the herbs and seasonings are mixed well, and hey, it's ready to serve. You know, it's a lot of fun to come up with creative ways to do gift wrapping for the holidays. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. In fact, when I receive a gift and I know someone has put a little thought into it, even if they've used newspaper or recycled things, it's pretty cool. And I've got a few ideas here for name tags when it comes to gift wrapping. It's like you get it all wrapped up and you go, oh gosh, now I have to put a name tag on it. So these are some fun and easy ways to do that. Uh, the first one, is just uh, making some of these, which are kind of cool, aren't they? These little Christmas trees. And basically what I've done is I've just taken paint samples. You know, I keep these things around because I'm always picking out paint. But uh, these cards cut very easily, so you could make a Christmas tree just by doing a Christmas tree form like this, and then cutting out sort of a trunk for it, like I've done here and here. You don't even have to be precise about this. And then what's fun is just to attach some little bobble to the top and you can find these little stars at a craft shop and I'm just putting those right at the top like this with just a little dab of hot glue. It's just kind of fun and you can put someone's name on it. You could do 20 or 30 of these in very little time at all. Now here's another one where you can take any kind of paper you like. But what I want to show you is how to make these little Christmas trees. And um, you can use, this is solid paper, it's the same color on both sides. In this case, this is some gift wrapping paper. You know, you always have those little scraps. What you wanna do is you wanna start with a, a, a demaloon or a half circle as it's called, like this. And it's really simple. And, and if you do it like this and use one that has the colors on both sides, you get this effect, which I think is kinda nice. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna hold it like this and I'm gonna fold this side over just about one quarter of it, like that, okay? And then I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna press it. Then I'm gonna take this corner and I'm gonna pull that corner up like this. Okay, see, just like that. Then I'm gonna flip it over like this and I'm gonna pull this side down like that. And that gives me my little Christmas tree shape, just like that, see? Now, what you want to do is to hold that into place, you just want to tack it on the inside with just a little hot glue, like there, a little bit there, a little bit here. So you can see these are really fun and you can easily write someone's name on them. And hey, it's from scrap wrapping paper. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, now the last one requires picking up some of these little balsa wood ornaments. You see I have little stars here. Um, different shapes and forms. And what you can do is you can take some chalkboard paint um, in kind of a fun color. And what I've used here is a chalkboard paint that's sort of a dull putty color. And you just paint these with the chalkboard paint. I like to do about two coats on them and let them completely dry. And uh, you can see this one's completely dried. Nice color. And then you can just write on there with chalk the person's name goes to Ron. You just take the chalk and write on it like that. This would make Sue very happy. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed our time together as much as I have. And I hope you picked up a few ideas that you can use during your holiday celebration. Until next time, good eating and good health. Good. But they all mix and play well together on this table, unlike your relatives. Okay, so.
up close. Come here, guys. Come here, big boy. Oh, yeah. Good egg layers. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Squirmy. Okay. Holy mirror.